We've talked quite a bit about why this uh, deal is happening and why now. We spoke to Sonia Loud uh, over at LGIM earlier on and she was saying this isn't because it's London, it's not because it's cheap, this is because of energy transition and the copper assets. Is that the driving force here? I think that's right. Everyone would like to get their hands on more copper and BHP uh, among uh, the companies that would like to do this. If they got this deal done, and it's a complicated deal with many hurdles, but if they got it done, they would control about 10% of the global uh, copper supply and be the biggest biggest supplier. And that position is very well for a world in which the expectation is the electrification of everything, all those wires and cables that we're going to need, all those electric cars means that copper demand is going to keep rising at a time when supply is likely to remain constrained. Well, you say it's complicated. I think you're being polite. Um, there is a significant South African problem that is built into this. Amplats is one part of it. The unions in South Africa are another part of it. The pension funds are another part of it. The government's another part of it. I, this is a complicated deal. Is that why the premium is maybe as low as it is? Yes, I mean, I think that... People have always seen that Anglo's copper assets are an attractive target, but the reason that it's never happened is because of the complicated structure of Anglo and the rather hodgepodge nature of its assets. You mentioned South Africa, that's the really key one, and it's important to note that BHP have made a divestment of its South African platinum and iron ore businesses, a condition of this deal uh, proceeding. Now, the biggest shareholder is the Public Investment Corporation of South Africa, a state uh, investment uh, firm. They will be very protective of South Africa's interests in any deal. And another complicated factor is uh, De Beers, uh, the diamond business, which uh, is probably not key for BHP, but is also uh, partly controlled by the state of Botswana. So there are lots of hurdles. The final one I would mention is antitrust. Now, China has in the past intervened in mining deals. They buy half the world's copper, so are very interested in uh, the map of the global copper industry, and they will probably think that this would give BHP too much control. So there is a South African angle, but there's also an antitrust angle that we need to be aware of here as well. OK, so a couple of reasons why this could be complicated. Well, what about other bidders? Do, do those factors just put off others? Would it make more sense for others to take on this asset, given that BHP's offer seems to be conditional on selling lots of things? Well, I think that other bidders would have the same problems with Anglo-American that uh, BHP have, but there's no doubt that Anglo-Americans, uh, the copper business, uh, centred on some world-class assets in Chile, would also be of interest to Rio Tinto and perhaps even Glencore, although Glencore um, has its own uh, deal going on with its uh, bid for some of Tech's uh, assets. Now, um, again, that would be difficult. But once Anglo is in play, uh, I think it is going to set off a bit of a frenzy within the industry about how it ultimately uh, shakes out and what the shape of the industry is going to be from here.